Hello everyone and thank you for attending today's webinar, How to Elevate Test Automation with the Right Framework. Before we begin, I'd like to cover three housekeeping items for our viewers. First, at the bottom of your audience console, you'll find a number of widgets for questions and additional resources. When you have questions for the presenter during the webinar, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. We will answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation, and if we run out of time, we will get back to you via email. Second, if you need any tech support during the webinar, please use the help option. Third and finally, a copy of today's slide deck is available in the resources section at the bottom of your screen. We will also email you a link to the recording of this webinar within the next few hours. With that, I will introduce our presenter for today, Aran Kinsburner, DevOps Chief Evangelist and Senior Director here at Perfecto by Perforce. Aran, thank you for joining us on today's webinar. Sure, happy to be here. Thank you, Shelby. Hi, everyone. Um, today's webinar is actually going to be quite packed and exciting as well because we have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, and uh, the reason is because if you want to elevate, if you want to mature your test automation, uh, you do want to have uh, first, obviously, the, the right test automation framework. But uh, as you will see throughout the webinar, it might be more than one framework uh, to accomplish your entire set of goals. So we're going to cover a lot of things, and we're going to focus both on web testing and mobile testing. That's why it's going to be a lot of content. And as Shelby mentioned, all of the slides are in the resources folder. So whatever uh, you know you might be missing or you want to get back to, you have all the slides. And feel free to use the Q&A panel and uh, ask us any questions uh, during this um, webinar. Um, as Shelby mentioned, I am a chief evangelist and, uh, and also uh, working at Perfecto by Perforce. Uh, you can connect with me through the social uh, channels, as you can see on the slide, uh, if you are not yet following me. And you can also follow my uh, personal blog. I try to put some uh, fresh content on that uh, every now and then, whenever there is a new thing to uh, update on. So let's start today's session and let's start with cross-browser testing, and then we'll move to the mobile test automation. When you look at the mapping of the cross-browser testing landscape as of today, it's being divided by three types of three methods and architectures uh, where you can actually see the placements of the different test automation frameworks. On the upper level, as you can see, there are the web driver protocol-based frameworks. Uh, we're just mentioning here a few, Selenium, Nightwatch, WebDriver.io, but there are obviously other that are based on WebDriver. Now, the middle uh, tier frameworks, which are based on CDP, the Chrome Debugger Protocol, which are Puppeteer and Playwright, developed and led by the same team. Now, uh, Playwright is Microsoft, but the same team that uh, is now building Playwright actually initially built Puppeteer, and these are CDP-based uh, framework. And the lower but, uh, bottom of this uh, kind of uh, landscape is uh, for Cypress, and Cypress is unique in the sense that it's while it's just supporting one language, one development language, which is JavaScript plus TypeScript, uh, it's running on the browser and it gets uh, the developers few values. One of them is less stickiness and uh, B, uh, velocity and execution speed, uh, as well as debugging capabilities. So this is, if you want to just, uh, in a nutshell, understand what is today's selections for your web test automation, you see it in, uh, on the screen here. And people would argue about the flakiness and the cross-browser support and you know the execution speed. Uh, my take, again, Cypress, from my experience, is the fastest execution framework out there, but it has some limitations in dev languages and uh, browsers as well. Puppeteer and Playwright are using a unique method and architecture, which has a lot of benefits. We'll soon uh, provide some more details on that. And Selenium, especially with the recent version 4, has unique values, cross-browser, end-to-end testing, all supported browsers, almost all supported leading language bindings. So, uh, and obviously deriving from Selenium is the Appium mobile testing. So you can understand that there is a lot to talk about and a lot of uh, kind of cross uh, links between these different technologies if you are looking at the entire digital landscape test automation coverage. Let's start with Playwright, and Playwright uh, is unique because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Playwright is based on the Chrome Debugger protocol, but this uh, Chrome Debugger protocol and the architecture was actually expanded uh, to support 
everything. So it's not just the Chrome and Edge, but also the Safari and the WebKit, uh, sorry, uh, the WebKit Safari and Firefox as well. And the Playwright uh, architecture allows uh, Microsoft with the uh, latest framework, which by the way, supports more language bindings than uh, just than Cypress and also than Puppeteer uh, to really do a cross browser test automation. It's not running on mobile, it's running only on desktop web browsers, uh, but it covers all the leading browsers that are out there today. And it's going by popularity. And you can see here, it has access to almost all the layers of the browser. As you can see here, the security, the location, the UI, the rendering engines, everything that you need to engage with the browser uh, itself is supported by Playwright. If you look at uh, where Playwright stands from a, an adoption perspective, you can see that uh, while the adoption is growing slow, this is the orange, uh, bar here, it does grow and it grows uh, through the community adoption as well. Uh, and we see, I see at least, uh, that 2022 is going to be a break, uh, a breakthrough for Playwright. So it will become much closer from an adoption and market share perspective, uh, maybe close to uh, what we see with Cypress and uh, Puppeteer. And we see here Selenium, Puppeteer. Um, and uh, Cypress are the leading ones from an adoption perspective, followed by WebDriver.io. Specifically, uh, some details on Playwright. So as I mentioned, Playwright is a modern end-to-end -end cross browser testing framework. It's open source. It has multiple language supports for Java, like JavaScript and TypeScript, which is on par with Cypress, but it also supports Python, Java, uh, and C Sharp. You can test on all the different browsers, which is an advantage. You can use Playwright in an headed or headless browser, again, similarly to Puppeteer. And you have the mobile device emulation support. It's not real devices, but you can actually simulate some viewports and do some uh, basic responsive web testing if you like. It also uh, has uh, abilities, as you can see here, to do uh, auto weight and other advanced automation capabilities like mocking geolocation and file handling, like, uh, uh, you know, connecting or data-driven testing through file handling, reading from the files and stuff like that, and working with iframes, which I know uh, other frameworks are a bit challenged with. You can see here just a sample code uh, snippet that shows you how you can use whether headless or not. In, in this case, if you choose headless uh, with the option of false, it will run with the UI itself. Uh, so uh, you can learn more about that from the playwright.dev website. But again, this is a very modern, very mature framework, uh, which uh, is led by Microsoft, it's open source, and um, again, very powerful framework to consider if you are starting a new project, and uh, these are a few of the languages that you are familiar with, uh, it's a cool framework to start with. <clears throat> As you can see, that's just a basic snapshot of uh, TypeScript, JavaScript is more or less the same, with the await capabilities, uh, it's very easy. The syntax and the APIs are very easy to learn, so the ramping up is quite uh, friendly to the to the developers. Uh, some of the cons of uh, Playwright, because we talked a lot about the good things, uh, is that uh, it's a newer framework. The community is not as large as other, like Selenium and Cypress. Uh, the, uh, that's an uh, I don't know if it's a con because the IE browser is becoming end of life in any case, but uh, it's not supported. Uh, it does not run on real mobile devices, so for that you will need uh, an Appium framework to complement your responsive web testing. Uh, and um, it's not as friendly as uh, you would imagine, for example, with Cypress, uh, uh, we as Perfecto, uh, a cloud solution. It's easy for us to run Cypress in the cloud at scale, the same goes with Selenium and Appium. Uh, with Playwright, it's a bit more challenging. Um, let's now, uh, after just again, I'm giving you a test of the frameworks and I will give my final take towards the end of this webinar, but Playwright, again, just to summarize, a growing and emerging technology, emerging framework led by Microsoft, cross-browser testing, lack of real, real mobile device testing, not always uh, first to market to support the latest and greatest web and mobile uh, platforms to run on. With regards to Selenium and Cypress, Selenium and Cypress are going uh, in parallel, and they are not really competing. One can complement the other. Uh, as you can see, Cypress has a lot of good benefits and capabilities, but it does not yet support all the language binding, and it's not supporting uh, WebKit Safari. It's on the 
Cypress roadmap, but you can do a lot of sophisticated end-to-end -end testing uh, on your web browsers with Cypress and with Selenium. So it's just a matter of pick your uh, preferred path technology. And as, as I mentioned, Cypress allows, is a very, it's a friendly for developers because of the debugging and the uh, fresh uh, reloading of the browser with debugging and reporting capabilities, mocking capabilities, uh, and API testing, which is very sophisticated by Cypress. There are also some other things that are uh, uh, coming in the horizon for Cypress, like uh, the fact that Cypress runs in the browser, it's a given and it's a, uh, a contributor to the execution speed and the velocity, but uh, Cypress also comes with stub navigation API, so you can control battery and measure stuff. It has this, the, the clock and the uh, interception of network uh, conditions, so you can actually measure and monitor what's happening every given uh, time tick, if you like, uh, so you can monitor your web uh, outputs. Uh, in addition, uh, this is exactly what, what I was, was talking. In addition, Cypress also uh, is uh, introducing what they call component testing. Component testing is uh, a middle layer between the unit and the integration testing. So it's a much more sophisticated uh, coverage than just unit because it comes in between two uh, units or two uh, components and uh, makes the, the testing uh, of that, uh, of this artifact. So it's a, an additional layer of coverage on top of unit, if you like. And to really get started with component testing in Cypress, and it's not something that is supported by any other frameworks, uh, as far as I know, uh, you can simply uh, install the latest Cypress and run the NPX Cypress OpenCT, that's the component testing uh, version or method of uh, Cypress with components. And uh, you can test, again, uh, different areas of the applications, different components within the application without testing the full-blown uh, website, if you like. And I think that's a kind of a unique and very innovative approach for testing that Cypress is introducing. It's still growing. It's, uh, I would say, between beta and GA as we speak, uh, but it's close to being uh, a full ready product uh, that uh, users, developers can uh, start looking at. And another thing that you can do, we mentioned earlier about Puppeteer and Playwright that are using CDP. So Cypress can also, Cypress is not based on CDP, but Cypress does have the integration uh, with the browser dev tools. So you can do debugging and get some other insights from the dev tools of the browsers into your Cypress environment. I mentioned that Cypress can do API testing. Cypress comes with a lot of plugins. Uh, so you can actually maximize your test automation coverage with uh, accessibility, visual testing, uh, BDD, uh, and other uh, other stuff, other email testing and other capabilities. And as we speak, I'm sure that there is a new plugin that is being worked on uh, by the community itself. Cypress, as I mentioned also early, uh, comes with uh, an SDK uh, that Perfecto built that allows you to upload any of your Cypress agnostic tests to the cloud and run it in parallel in the different data centers that Perfecto provides and get all the different reports from the Perfecto cloud. So you can actually scale your Cypress and run it in the cloud with Perfecto as well. Cypress, and the, the, the main thing that uh, I would focus on from a roadmap perspective for Cypress, Cypress uh, is already maturing, as I showed you just a few slides ago, the component testing. I will soon say a word about the Cypress Studio, which is also in beta. Uh, and the iframe and WebKit support are also the next big thing that Cypress is going to offer the community. I think the most anticipated ones are, again, the WebKit and iframe, but uh, it's also the Cypress Studio. And if you know you're familiar with Selenium, Selenium has its own IDE as a plugin to Safari and Chrome browsers that allows you to do record and playback of your basic scripts. Cypress is introducing in a beta stage right now a test recorder, and that's the Cypress Studio. It allows you to really record your test from a browser within the Cypress Studio and then look at the code and do the modification on your source code in JavaScript as needed, put assertions and add whatever you want. Uh, but uh, that's a new studio beta that Cypress is now introducing to the market. And you can see the link here in the, in the slide deck. So you want, if you want, you can go and learn more about it. So some cool things and innovative things that are supported by Cypress today. 
you can already kind of measure some of the diffs here between Cypress and Playwright. Uh, you know, I mentioned the component testing, I mentioned the execution and run, uh, uh, running in the cloud or running on the browser itself. I mentioned the Cypress Studio, API testing, visual testing and other plugins that are supported by Cypress and enriches the test automation coverage. So after Playwright and Cypress, let's now talk a bit about Selenium. And Selenium uh, 4, uh, it's actually already GA now. So Selenium 4 was introduced, was released to the market, and you can already start using it. And the main thing that you can uh, enjoy uh, with Selenium 4 is a new grid architecture, support for relative locators, like uh, uh, finding the elements on the website, you know, by using uh, near, under, you know, below, whatever. So these kind of things are uh, very uh, cool enhancements to your test automation creation uh, because you can ensure that you are finding the exact element, uh, you know, on the screen. And if you have two or three elements which are either close to each other or have uh, similar uh, identifiers with these relative locators, you can ensure that you're always selecting, in this case, uh, this is the above, okay, uh, relative locator, so you can find the exact element, in this case, above the password field, uh, you want to find the input uh, email address, whatever. So uh, relative locators, a new grid architecture, which allows you to scale much easier and run in parallel, uh, are a few things that Selenium 4 introduces to the industry. The next one are the Windows and Tab automation, so you can uh, automate across multiple tabs and open new windows uh, within your Selenium script. Uh, the, the CDP integration, as I mentioned, is becoming uh, table stakes. Now Cypress has it and Selenium has it. Playwright is built with Puppeteer on CDP, so uh, extension of Selenium and Cypress with CDP is also supported. In some, uh, just to give an example, what you can leverage uh, with the CDP other than debugging and performance, you can also emulate the geolocation of your web application. Selenium 4, and what, this is in my mind one of the biggest things, and if you have existing Selenium 3 and below uh, scripts, you want to make sure that your scripts are fully W3C compliant, which means you are using the right capability names, uh, like browser name, browser version, because this is now uh, constant across all different browser or web drivers that are supported by Selenium. So Selenium is fully W3C compliant. It also comes with the new Selenium IDE, which runs on both Firefox and Chrome, uh, was uh, modified recently by Apple Tools, and it's now free and available to download as a plugin to your browser and extend whatever you generate from the Selenium IDE into code within your IDE. So just to uh, look at Selenium versus Cypress, and again, uh, maybe the versus is, uh, is kind of harsh. Uh, how can Cypress complement Selenium? That's in my mind how you should look at this slide. And you should do it by looking at where do you see flakiness in your Selenium? Selenium has been much more time in the, in the market than Cypress. So if you have uh, a backlog of flaky scenarios, uh, poor testing, testing that is manual and exploratory because you couldn't automate it with Selenium from different reasons, time or skill set or whatever. These test cases can be uh, a POC uh, a candidate for Cypress test automation. If you're just starting a new project, consider Cypress because it's a very uh, easy to use when you're creating your test automation. Because it's, run, it's running on the browser itself, it comes with debugging, DOM, shadow DOM capabilities, it really is a very friendly tool to build your first test automation suite. It also supports BDD, so if you want Cypress with Cucumber, you can do it. Uh, so if you have a new uh, project, if it's small, consider looking at Cypress. Uh, but keep in mind that Cypress does not support iframes, multi-tabs, uh, and uh, WebKit, for example. So if you would need uh, to test also on Safari, on Mac, and stuff like that, you will need to complement Cypress projects with Selenium, and vice versa. If you have Selenium project and you want to, uh, again, automate the flakiness, this is where you would use uh, Cypress. So it's one plus one equals three. I hate this sentence, but this is, in my mind, the right one in that scenario, in that case. At the end of the day, it takes a village of people to, pre, uh, to create continuous testing and test automation. It also uh, it takes a village of frameworks 
to really maximize your test automation coverage for your responsive, progressive, or just web applications. And in this example, you can see the different considerations, capabilities, and personas that uh, you need in order to uh, kind of complement all these different technologies. Selenium, Cypress, uh, scriptless or cordless, and BDD, each and every type of technology suits a specific persona with specific skill set and also supports specific features, language bindings, browsers, uh, uh, testing types like APIs versus uh, just functional, mocking, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have today your test plan, you have your existing suites, see how you can maximize your coverage by maybe employing a new or an additional test automation technology framework that can really maximize your test automation coverage because the reality shows that a single technology for the entire team, as that developers and business tester, it's simply not enough, okay? There are many reasons for that. This is why you want to consider at least a secondary technology stack for your continuous testing activities. With that, I think I've covered the majority of, I didn't uh, expand on Puppeteer. Puppeteer is very close to uh, Playwright, but it's just for Chrome testing, headless or headed, again, led by the folks from Playwright right now. Uh, but uh, every, a lot of the things that, that I've said about um, Playwright kind of apply also to the Puppeteer, again, excluding the different uh, browsers and languages uh, that Puppeteer is a bit challenged with. With that, let's shift to the mobile application testing landscape and see which frameworks are available today, at least the leading ones. Obviously, there are a few more, but if you're just looking at the more advanced and the leading technologies that I see within my customer base and are continuously uh, updated and supported by the community, these are the four. Espresso for Android UI testing, XUI test from Apple, uh, built and baked into the Xcode on Mac. Appium, which is the web driver framework for cross mobile uh, test automation uh, capabilities. And Flutter, which is unique, uh, again, in the types of application that it can cover and in the language, uh, as well as the architecture of the framework itself. Starting with Espresso, Espresso in my mind is a very advanced test automation framework. Appium is actually uh, built on top of Espresso. Espresso is led by Google. It's fully supported within the Android Studio. This is why it's very appealing to developers, Android application developers. And you know, we are uh, very close. Uh, uh, just recently, Google released the Android 12. Android 12 can be easily tested on the Pixel uh, emulators or real devices in the Perfecto Cloud with Espresso. Uh, Espresso gives you the full uh, access to all the capabilities within your mobile application. It's actually kind of a gray, gray box testing uh, solution because to test with Espresso, you would need the access to the code. Okay, uh, in opposed to Appium that test your AP, uh, APK for Android or the IPA for iOS, the Espresso framework runs on the code itself. It bakes uh, or uh, builds uh, two APKs, APK files from the source code. One of them is the test APK. The other one is the binary application under test. And one, uh, actually the two applications are getting installed on the device that you want to test on. And one actually APK test the actual binary of the of your application. So uh, again, it's Kotlin Java-based framework led by Google, supporting all the different Android uh, application, uh, Android uh, platforms and devices. Uh, friendly for developers, requires the access to your code, and uh, to run Espresso, you would need to build a dedicated test APK together with your. Uh, uh, a binary APK, both will get installed as part of the execution on the device under test. The syntax uh, of using Espresso is very friendly uh, with view matchers and the scenario itself or the test code itself, as you can see, is very friendly for the, the reader and this is what makes Espresso so friendly. It's very easy to create a test. As you can see here, it's a plain English syntax with Kotlin or with Java uh, on a view R.ID is the, uh, if you are familiar with page object model, R.ID is the file that consists of all the element locators of your Android application. But basically, on the view of uh, this 
uh, element, you would perform uh, a type of text, and on the view of uh, this green button, you will click on uh, the element or the button, and you will validate or check that the output matches uh, the displayed text, like here it's a low Steve. So it's a very uh, easy uh, to use, very synchronized framework, and it's very fast because it's running on the device itself. There is no web driver, back and forth client server. Espresso is known for a fast execution speed, and this is why developers uh, tend to like, to like it and use it. The pros of Espresso, just to recap of uh, everything that I've just said, it allows you to do a lot of advanced testing. It's easy to use. It's easy to create test cases. It's fully baked into the CI CD. It's very fast and stable, but it's only for Android. It's limited uh, with the development language choices. So if you compare Espresso to Appium, Appium has more, much more uh, language bindings like Selenium. Uh, uh, Espresso is just Kotlin and Java, and you need the application source code to build your test cases with Espresso. Moving to XUI test and XUI test for iOS, you will find that there are a lot of similarities with, uh, between XUI test and Espresso because it's also a dev-friendly uh, framework. It's not open source, it's cloud source led by Apple, fully supported within the Xcode IDE. It's, it's being built on Swift and Obje Objective-C. If you want to create your test cases, you need to be familiar and strong with Swift and Objective-C. This is why the majority of developers are the ones that are adopting and using XUI test. As I mentioned earlier, Appium is built on top of XUI test for iOS and Espresso for Android, but Appium gives you additional language bindings like Java, Python, and JavaScript. Uh, but if you want to write, write a plain XUI test scenario or suite, you would need to be familiar with Swift and Objective-C, and you would need to work on a Mac environment because that's where, where XUI test is working on. In opposed to Espresso, XUI test is black box testing. You do have an IPA and IPA test built that you are testing, but it's more closed than the Android Espresso environment. It still has full access to all of the operating system, uh, you know, inner uh, objects, elements, and API. So XUI test does give you a lot of coverage and capabilities, including biometric testing and stuff like that, and security. Uh, but again, it's more closed than Android Espresso. This is just a sample of the uh, syntax of uh, XUI test. If you see, this is an example of testing a game uh, style switch. You can see using the syntax of let uh, with uh, all the different gestures and buttons that you can click and automate like slide button uh, with all the clicking uh, within the application that you can do. Uh, so uh, again, very friendly for developers who are familiar with Swift and Objective-C, very fast. And uh, just to summarize what I've just told you, speed, reliability, setup is almost non, you don't need to do anything because it's baked into, into your IDE. Uh, it's fully integrated into CICD, Jenkins and, and the likes as capabilities of mocking but like Espresso, it's only for iOS. It's limited by the development language, languages that you can automate with. You need the application source code, not always available for test automation engineers. And uh, you need to understand the iOS application development uh, architecture as a tester to build uh, you know, a test IPA that you can run on virtual or real devices. Just to summarize that point, both XUI test, Espresso, Selenium, Playwright, uh, you know, Cypress, everything that I've just talked about can be used with Perfecto in the cloud at scale on real devices, virtual devices, simulators and emulators, and desktop browsers. As time will permit, I will try to show you a demo, at least of one of the frameworks. I won't have time to show you all the different frameworks, but I will sh show you at least one. Now that we know Espresso and XUI test, these are the uh, kind of pillars of the Appium framework. Appium is a web driver framework like Selenium, but is dedicated for uh, mobile test automation of hybrid and native uh, applications. It supports end-to-end -end testing across different bindings, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, C Sharp, Python, and Ruby. It's open source, which means you can uh, contribute, you can uh, leverage additional uh, forks and branches of the Appium project. Appium is right now in a mature 2.0 beta. 
uh, and we should expect hopefully by end of this year, beginning of next one, the Appium 2.0 release, which is going to be a major uh, change of you know the framework architecture, the supported bindings, the supported libraries and driver protocols. Uh, I will say a few words about what's coming with Appium 2 uh, just uh, in a few moments. If you are familiar with Selenium, Appium is going to be kind of more of the same because it has the same use of uh, you know, finding elements by, it's a web driver based framework just on mobile. So everything that you know with Selenium, you can leverage and can uh, this can allow you to do, uh, to get an easy ramp up for Appium. Appium also has a desktop object spy. Uh, you can use Appium as the plain object spy or desktop uh, application coming from the community, or you can use the Appium within the Perfecto uh, environment with the Perfecto dedicated object spy. It's your choice if you're a customer of Perfecto, you have these two options to use the object locators and understand which objects to uh, use within your test automation script. Appium, as I mentioned, this is just, uh, it's a bit blurry, but this is just uh, an example of a source code snippet with the different language bindings like Java, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, and C Sharp. And this is an advantage if you like, if you have the right skill set or the right languages that are listed here and you are less familiar with Swift, Objective-C, Kotlin, uh, Appium is your framework of choice. So the pros of, of Appium, of course, is the cross-platform. It's not just iOS or Android, it's both. You have a large community that backs Appium. You have the support of multiple language bindings and you have the object spy. It's fully backed into CI CD tools. Almost every major uh, CI tool can work with Appium. Uh, some would say that it's slower to execute tests with Appium and it makes sense because it's web driver and it's a lot of network back and forth uh, in opposed to the uh, Espresso and XUI tests which are running on the devices themselves with the dedicated APK and IPAs. So uh, this is what contributes in some cases to the slow, uh, slow execution of Appium. There are workarounds that you can actually, if you're an expert in test automation with Appium, you can kind of overcome some of these slow back and forth transactions and uh, expedite a bit your Appium scripts. Uh, but by definition, Appium is a bit slower than the Espresso and XUI test. Flakiness, uh, I don't like to uh, talk a lot about flakiness because flakiness is kind of uh, a mix of uh, the technology, but also the skill set and the best practices that are being used by the developers. So uh, if it, there can be a flaky test, but it's on you as a tester or developer to mitigate and debug your flaky test cases to, to avoid or uh, resolve them. So flakiness should be, in my mind, a one and done, and next uh, execution, it should be either eliminated or excluded from your execution. So I wouldn't, uh, I'm writing it here because people are complaining about flakiness, but I think it's, it's not kind of uh, doing justice to the Appium framework. It's a matter of how good you are in understanding the best practices and actually following them. The setup of Appium is a bit different than because you need the devices, you need the connectivity, you need the installations and different driver uh, understandings uh, in opposed to Espresso and XUI tests, which are very embedded into the IDEs that the developers use. But again, it's not rocket science and uh, you, can, uh, you can do it and there are a lot of guides and documentations on how to do it. Uh, with that, I want to move to the uh, just one slide of you know, the reality. And uh, it, again, it's a bit unfair because if you see here, you know, Appium has much more uh, market share and adoption than uh, Espresso and XUI test. But if you look at Appium, Appium actually is, uh, con uh, is based on XUI test and Espresso. So, uh, and developers are using Espresso and XUI test and test automation engineers are using Appium. So um, it's not, uh, as kind of uh, black and white, or uh, maybe I, I think that these numbers are not doing that much justice to the underlying technologies that Appium leverages. But this this is the adoption of the the usage of uh, practitioners in the marketplace. Uh, obviously, Appium is more uh, advanced and appealing to mobile application testers because it's cross-platform, as I mentioned, and it has more uh, friendly languages that you can use, and you don't need the source code. It's very black box testing on the binary itself. Everything that I've just said is, is, is summarized in this table. So you can see the different languages, the different uh, considerations, if you like. So if you want to consider, uh, you know, one 
over the other. I think that you need to choose, uh, you don't need to choose, you need to use these three frameworks, Espresso, XGRS, and Appium as part of your entire mobile test automation strategy. Have the developers, as I'm listing here, uh, adopt Espresso and XUI test and let the test automation engineers expand test automation coverage with the Appium technology. For the final part before the demo, I want to start uh, a bit a discussion on Flutter because Flutter is uh, becoming an equal citizen in the mobile test automation space in general in the digital landscape. And Flutter as a new technology led and developed by Google is uh, a cross platform framework, I'm not saying testing because it's a framework or a platform with which you develop your application and you can deploy it across multiple platforms. As you can see here, mobile, Android and iOS, desktop, which is Linux, Mac and Windows, and also the Google Fuchsia, which Google is leading. So you can actually build one code base with a language that Flutter uh, with Google support, which is called Dart. It's close to uh, Java uh, in the syntax, but it's a unique uh, open source uh, technology uh, called Dart. And Flutter allows you with a single code base to build and test uh, the entire digital uh, assets of your uh, product portfolio. So if you want to compare you know, uh, the mobile and desktop web today, you see that you know, to build a mobile application, you need Java, um, uh, Kotlin, uh, Objective-C, Swift, and then JavaScript for your web, Linux for your Linux uh, portfolio, et cetera. Flutter uh, is a new promise, and you can see here that based on uh, the, uh, one of the recent uh, trends in the market, uh, this is Google Trends, so we should take it kind of uh, under uh, uh, consideration because Google is behind Flutter, but you can see that React Native and Flutter are becoming very close uh, one against the other. So Flutter is becoming widely adopted. I can tell you that uh, this is not, not a bluff. Some of my customers are also looking at Flutter as the uh, future technology for building web, mobile, and desktop applications. So uh, you want to be familiar with this uh, technology. And the architecture, I think that's the key to the uh, beauty of Flutter. And you can see that Flutter has unique UI with widget capabilities, rendering engines, and everything like that, again, built with doubt, but the, the magic is the material and the Cupertino designs. These are the two UI layers that allows rich user experience, very uh, sophisticated widgets that can run across the different platforms that I mentioned earlier with a C and C++ engine that kind of connects the framework uh, components to the embedder. And this is where every uh, you know build is actually being compiled and made for the specific, like the native plugins for your iOS application, for your mo uh, mobile Android applications, the web applications, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a three layer architecture of Flutter from the framework, which is the secret source of the framework itself built on Dart, the engine that renders and does everything uh, in C and C++, take care of all the system events, composition, et cetera, up until the embedder, which is the platform specific deployer uh, allow, allows uh, that allows Google to uh, deploy to all the supported uh, channels. The benefits of Flutter is obviously fast development, uh, flexible UI, and native performance because it's built on the dedicated, uh, as I showed you in the previous slide, the embedders or the uh, platform-specific embedders allows you to get to enjoy high-performing applications, and you can see. Uh, uh, if you go to the flutter.dev, you can see some case studies, you can see some already deployed to production applications, which actually won awards on the UI UX and also performance and ease of use. So uh, Flutter is growing, is becoming important, again, based mostly on doubt development, uh, but that's the technology. If you want to compare Flutter with the Appium technology, Flutter is newer, so let's not judge Flutter, and by the way, as we speak, Flutter is already now in version 2.5, okay? And uh, it's adopting more and more capabilities like static code analysis and accessibility testing and uh, many other capabilities. But from a test coverage perspective, 
Flutter on its own cannot test outside of the application context. It's only based on doubt, and it cannot support sophisticated things such as audio testing, visual analysis, location injection, uh, and uh, two-factor authentication and biometrics and stuff like that. This is why, you know, we know already what are, what are the benefits of Appium. If you want a complete test automation strategy for your Flutter application, you should consider Flutter native doubt plus the Flutter for Appium driver that complements what you cannot do with the Flutter. The Flutter for uh, Appium driver is based on WebDriver.io and allows you to complement some of these non uh, uh, application specific capabilities like testing outside of the application context and doing more of the scenarios that are not supported right now. So please consider that. And just because we are in the context of Flutter, uh, I will, will connect it with the Appium 2.0. Appium 2.0 is uh, already in beta, as I mentioned to you. And as you can see, Appium 2.0, to install it, you can uh, uh, run the, the, the command npm install Appium next and it will allow you to start exploring the latest Appium beta. And you can see that the uh, beauty of the Appium Next version is that it has uh, the ability to install specific drivers. So if I just want to install the Flutter driver or just the Espresso, I will specify Appium driver install Flutter or Safari or Espresso, and I will only use and work on the dedicated driver. And this differentiator contributes, differentiator contributes to performance and stability and also uh, size. Uh, so uh, that's one of the changes. Obviously, Appium 2 is coming packed with many other capabilities uh, and plugins support. But uh, this is one of the driver list capabilities that can connect me to the context that I just mentioned on Flutter. With that, uh, I would like to uh, switch to a short, uh, short demo, okay, uh, of the Perfecto platform, and I also want to show you uh, a short uh, demo of Selenium running across multiple platforms. And as we speak, a uh, few things happen happened already in the industry, okay. Uh, the first one is that uh, I will just share my screen. Let's see that it works, okay. So few things happened already uh, on uh, in the market, in the digital market. The first one is iOS 15 with uh, I I iPhone 13 series. So uh, Perfecto supports the latest iOS 15 with all, as you can see here, iPhone 12 with iOS 15 is fully supported. Also with the new iPhone 13 devices. Also recently Android 12, sorry, Android 12 was released. So uh, also we have support for uh, the Pixel running on Android 12. Uh, you know what, let me show you uh, the specific uh, the specific platform here um, because it's in a different cloud. So you can see here, this is the iPhone 13 running on I iPhone 13 running on iOS 15. I will let it open, but also we have a Google Pixel with Android 12, and we also have the Windows 11. Okay, you can see here Windows 11 with the latest Chrome 95 uh, is fully supported. I will launch it as well. And I think Perfecto in that case is the first to market with both these new platforms. iPhone 13 running on iOS 15. This is how it looks like. Okay. And uh, we have also, I will just click on the clock because I mentioned the object spy in the context of Appium. So I'll just show you in a second how the object spy looks like. And you can see here, this is the XCY elements of uh, the, the native clock application on iOS on the iPhone 13. And you can use it uh, to copy uh, and paste it into your uh, Appium scripts, Appium project, or just XUI project. Okay. Uh, the Windows 11 with Chrome. Okay. You can see here it's a fully uh, functioning desktop uh, with the Chrome. And you can see here that you have access to the developer tools. So if you want to use Windows 11 and test on Chrome with the dev tools, you can use it uh, with the Perfecto Cloud. Again, this is just the manual testing abilities, okay? So I'll close the browser, I'll close the mobile phone, okay? And what I would like to show you why these uh, platforms are being released, I will go here and I'll go to the reporting, and go to the live stream. And now I want to show you the uh, the project. So I've built a Selenium project. 
uh, I, I, if time permits, I will show you also uh, a, a Cypress demo. But for now, I'm showing you Selenium. And you can see here the Selenium grid with Perfecto in the cloud. I'm using Windows 11, the new Windows 11 with Chrome 95. I'm also using uh, Mac OS uh, Big Sur with Safari 14. Okay. And I'm going to test a responsive project using TestNG in the cloud in parallel. So I'm ju just going to click the Selenium project. Okay, again, this is a Java Selenium project, nothing sophisticated here. But uh, once uh, all the web driver components are launched, I will just go to the cloud. Uh, I'll go to the live stream. I'll click on that. I will filter by my name. Okay, and you will see all these different mobile devices and browsers, including the latest iPhone, the latest Windows OS with Chrome 95, and other platforms permutations being populated and running my script. You see the execution speed. You see the wide coverage of the testing, which you can do with Selenium. Uh, going back with Cypress, you cannot add mobile and you cannot add the Safari browser still. So this is where Selenium kind of... Uh, is much more powerful than uh, Cypress or even Playwright, okay? Uh, but uh, again, this is what it is today. And you see while the execution is running, okay, each and every report is being thrown to my uh, environment with a full video that I can run uh, and see everything that happened on my desktop VM, including the Windows 11 and all the other platforms. So everything is recorded. You see the screenshots, you can download logs, uh, and videos, you can uh, open a defect in Jira if needed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this was uh, a short demo of the Selenium running in the cloud. And you know what? I do have a few more minutes. So let me just show you the Cypress solution uh, with Perfecto. And what Perfecto built is a Cypress SDK that allows you through a configuration file uh, to connect to the cloud with a security token and provide all the latest, uh, you know, grid capabilities. In this case, for example, I can change here to run on uh, Windows 11 uh, on the demo cloud. And basically, uh, I will just click, I will just run the command of uh, Perfecto Cypress run with pointing to the Perfecto config.json. What's going to happen right now is a bunch of test cases, one, two, three, four, five spec JavaScript test cases are going to be uploaded as a zip file to the cloud, and they are all going to run in parallel on the three permutations here. I could have put some parallelization if I needed in this uh, JSON file or added more permutations if I needed, and I can also provide here some job names. So if I want to connect it to my Jenkins or my CI and see it, in the Perfecto uh, CI dashboard, I could have done it as well through the reporting uh, uh, block in my JSON file. You see here I have some API testing running in Cypress, and I have uh, some basic JavaScript test cases in JavaScript that are being inherited from the latest Cypress version. So as I mentioned right now, a zip file is being created, uploaded, all the dependencies uh, for the, from the uh, package.json are being checked on the real VMs in the Perfecto cloud. And once everything is green here, all the checkbox here are green, the execution will start in the cloud and we will monitor it through the live stream uh, that is uh, supported by the Perfecto reporting. So let's move while the preparation is happening. Let's move to the cloud and I will go to the live stream. I will just close that and show you that uh, right now a run Cypress test is being executed. Okay, uh, I'll just switch back to the uh, ID so you see where it's coming from. So in the Perfecto config JSON, you see that I put a name, a script name, a run Cypress test. You can name your script so you can find it. Let's assume you're running Selenium, Protractor, Appium, and whatever to find it within your reporting you would give it a, a, a unique name. I gave it a run Cypress test. And you see here that the execution is about to start on, in this case, Windows 10 with Firefox 93. And this is this is the screen resolution. So the execution is just starting as I speak. Let's give it just two or three more seconds because everything is green in my console. So uh, I anticipate the execution will start just in a second. Let's see. Yes. 
So that, that's the Firefox browser. The execution started, and in, in this case, I am running the, the assertion uh, spec.js. You see the execution speed. It's a fresh VM that we populated in the cloud, and the Cypress is being installed on that VM, and the execution takes place. And uh, the next step uh, of test is running. That's the API test that is also running. So you can run both functional and API testing in parallel on the VM on the Perfecto cloud. This VM is now being cleaned and uh, a new VM will be uh, created to, to run the Cypress test. You can see here, if I would just uh, look at the, uh, the report, that the Cypress test was added to my reporting library. With that uh, short demo uh, that actually showed you both Selenium, the manual testing, the reporting, as well as Cypress running on both web and mobile, uh, I would like to conclude this very heavy uh, webinar I covered the leading frameworks for web. I covered the leading frameworks for mobile test automation. Uh, let's leave just a few more moments for Q&A and whatever can be answered by me in the short amount of time that is left, uh, we will take it offline. So I'll hand it, I'll hand it over to you, Shelby, to cover the few questions that are uh, in the pipeline. Sure. Uh, the first question from the audience asks, with the new releases of Selenium 4 and the expected release of Appium 2.0, should my team be making any immediate changes? That's a great question, and I will split it into two. Uh, Selenium 4, as I mentioned, uh, was released as GA, so it's out there. You don't need to switch immediately to the latest Selenium 4 unless you want to, but if you do so, you'll need to allocate a kind of a buffer, a time, uh, time frame for you to debug and convert your existing suites to the Selenium 4 because as I mentioned, there were few uh, important changes like the W3C compliance that was added to Selenium and you need to make some changes to your uh, capabilities definition and other uh, script related changes, but also you might want to leverage some of the new capabilities in the framework itself. So uh, allocate time if you want to move to the new technology to debug your scripts, to mature them, to add more capabilities. Uh, so it's not a simple upgrade. You probably need some time to do so. If you're in a very uh, burning uh, project right now and you don't have the time, I would suggest finish your uh, major release with the Selenium scripts that you currently have and then uh, quietly move in the background to the Selenium 4 uh, as time permits. With regards to Appium 2.0, Appium 2.0 is not yet released, so nothing immediately uh, for you to do as a test developer, but Appium 2 is coming with a fresh new set of capabilities. So if you are planning to migrate to Appium 2, as I mentioned with Selenium, you probably want to make kind of a branch uh, of your existing test cases, and maybe we, using the beta version of Appium, start debugging scripts and see what changes you need to make on your existing code uh, to make them ready for when Appium 2 is GA. I anticipate the Appium 2 to be released later in the year, maybe November, November December, but it might slip to the uh, beginning of 2022. Great, the next question asks, why should I use Playwright when I've been using Selenium up until now? That's a great question. Um, so, if, uh, like in any other technology uh, junction that you have, if it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. So if you don't have any problems with your existing framework technology, whether it's Selenium, Cypress, uh, you know, Puppeteer, Playwright, what, sorry, uh, whatever, you don't need to make the changes. The changes uh, are made by specific requirements and criteria, and you want to define that. So let's say you want to right now do uh, testing across all the different browsers and enjoy iframe and uh, you know uh, mocking capabilities uh, and you want headed plus headless browser testing and you not you're not able to get it uh, sufficient sufficiently with selenium that could be a trigger for playwright there is a new project that is starting a small one and you want to do a poc for maybe deploying it to a, across other projects maybe look at playwright but just because there is a new technology out there, this is not a good enough excuse uh, to change from existing technology or framework because it's heavy. You know, changing from one technology or framework to a different syntax, to a different framework, and migrating your existing scripts to this new framework is a very expensive, uh, I would say, move 
So you need to really justify why you would do it. And this is not specific to Playwright. The, the, this question was specifically around Playwright, but even with Selenium versus Cypress, uh, Flutter versus, I don't know, um, Appium or whatever, you want to have the right uh, objectives in front of you before making this switch, and not just because there is a new tool out there, uh, it, it mandates you to switch to it. No, that's not how it works. You want to uh, really have the right set of uh, objectives in front of you and make sure that this new framework or new technology can really stand behind what they promise on their websites. Do we have time for another question, Shelby? Yep, I think the last question that we're going to have time for is, is Flutter going to disrupt the mobile space in 2022? I, I think it, it actually, it's already disrupting uh, a lot of uh, the things that are happening. I, I see again in my customer base that organizations are starting to uh, play with the idea of switching or building a new application using Flutter. So the disruption is starting. This is why I believe that 2022 will be uh, a very significant milestone for the Flutter community where more organizations will switch their existing uh, applications, web and mobile, that are built using different technologies into a single one like Flutter. So disruption ahead, I would say, uh, and Flutter is becoming more and more adopted, more and more robust. As I mentioned, right now it stands on uh, version 2.5 with some new mature capabilities. I just think, and as I mentioned in my session, that the testing part of the Flutter technology is still not mature enough. So I do hope that Google is making together with the community behind Flutter, uh, more advancements to the Flutter testing framework so it will be able to really run and test across multiple platforms, web, mobile, within the application context, outside of the application context, advanced scenarios, biometrics, location, network conditions, and stuff like that, because Appium with native applications can do it, Selenium can do it on the web. Uh, so if Flutter needs to uh, become the leading uh, framework of choice for developer, for digital application developers, web, mobile, and desktop, it also needs to mature its ability to test across all these different targets. And right now, I feel that it's not yet there. Uh, my guess is that 2022 will be a significant year for the Flutter te technology. Great, well, that is all that we have time for today. If we didn't get to your question, we'll reach out to you afterwards via email. Thank you to our audience for your attendance and participation today. And of course, thank you to our presenter, Aran Kinsverter. We hope to see you next time. Thank you so much.